If you're a fearful avoidant attachment style or love style who finds themselves constantly choosing the safe partner in relationships and later experiences a lack of feeling truly fulfilled, we are going to cover five crucial reasons why this happens and really important things that you need to know. So number one, if you're not already familiar with fearful avoidant attachment style, it's essentially the hot and cold attachment style in relationships. And essentially it's because this individual and their upbringing learn to sort of form competing emotional associations about the same thing. The same thing being relationships. The competing emotional associations are feeling a lot of love and care and appreciation for relationships and also experiencing terror or a lot of fearful feelings and chaos in relationships. And so it's almost like there's this bitter sweetness to the fearful avoidance experience in relationships where they yearn for relationships and they fear them almost simultaneously. And that can cause them to really swing back and forth between being hot and cold. So the very first reason that fearful avoidance often end up choosing safe partners that they may feel unfulfilled around later is because they feel like the safe person actually brings them a need for safety. And what that's actually trying to do is pacify essentially the negative emotional associations about relationships. So if you grew up in a household where you felt chronically unsafe, a lot of chaos, constantly feeling in fight or flight mode, then you may find that you actually get a sense of peace from choosing a safe partner. And believe it or not, that's actually a really important need for fearful avoidance. I find that fearful avoidant attachment styles tend to associate themselves as the individuals who really care about excitement and passion and novelty and the roller coaster in relationships is that subconscious comfort zone to a certain degree. And yet, Fearful avoidant attachment styles tend to really crave and yearn for a sense of safety in relationships because it's this deeply unmet need. So while you may associate that safety is this lackluster thing, it's actually a really important part of feeling safe in relationships is part of becoming securely attached, right? It's, it's if you don't have this like safe, stable foundation then you will have a lot of difficulty maintaining that relationship and evolving it over the years. So what I'm basically trying to say from point number one here to summarize is that safety is actually an important need for fearful avoidance and really all attachment styles in, re in a relationship. And safety doesn't necessarily mean that that has to go against novelty and passion. You can still have passion and excitement um, in a relationship and safety in a relationship at the same time, having a sense of like safety and, and stability there. But fearful avoidance often believe that it's one or the other. And it's a, an easy trap for the fearful avoidant mind to fall into because they've been exposed to so many extremes growing up, um, or at least from maybe a past relationship, if that's what caused you to become fearful avoidant. So um, number one is the need for safety. Number two is sometimes choosing the safe person is a subconscious strategy to build trust. Fearful avoidance are often in a state of learned helplessness when it comes to trust. Often their baseline of trust has been fractured early on in their lives. And so they really don't know how to trust, how to build trust or establish trust. And part of establishing trust is actually learning to communicate through issues, communicate your boundaries, ask for context and transparency. Um, learn to work through different challenges that a relationship might have by talking about needs and hearing and validating each other's perspectives. That's actually for like a whole other video because we could go on and on about how to actually build trust. For the month of May, you can actually check out this uh, course and all other courses at the personal development school, inclu in, including free webinars with myself um, and free webinars with our trained facilitators, coaches inside the personal development school as well. Um, you can check out all of that for free for 14 days. It's a 14 day all access pass using the link down below. Um, and that will give you access to that course as well as all of their courses at PDS, including attachment style reprogramming courses, subconscious reprogramming, boundaries, needs courses, everything. Um, so this, this component of point number two here is that fearful avoidance often end up in a position where they choose safe people because they don't know how to trust otherwise. And they think that that person's going to solve the trust issues for them. But the reality for a lot of fearful avoidance is that even when you choose somebody safe, that's not going to be the root cause that 
um, fixes trust. You can be with the most trustworthy person, but if you have a lot of trust wounds, you'll still struggle to trust that person because it's really an internal subconscious programming problem because of past trauma, past painful events you've been through. So it's all about really learning to repair that baseline of trust. Um, but it's a very common reason for why fearful avoidance choose safe partners. Number three, there is the fear of being hurt. Fearful avoidance tend to carry this deep assumption at a subconscious level that as soon as I love somebody or fall in love with somebody, they will hurt me. And fearful avoidance tend to associate the more their feelings are for somebody, the more hurt they're going to become. And they're, they take that as like this big, scary experience. And so when they start investing in somebody in a relationship or, or sort of like, you know, bonding with somebody and, and really moving towards being with that person, they tend to have this huge fear deep down that this person is just going to hurt me more as soon as I really fall in love or open my heart or I'm vulnerable. And so sometimes they sort of play it safe by investing in people who don't make them feel afraid of being hurt. And again, it's sort of this like subconscious strategy for trust, for safety, um, and to, to actually feel like they can be themselves in a relationship because otherwise they often find themselves um, people pleasing a lot in relationships to try to earn their worth or earn love, um, which really brings me to point number four, which is that, you know, fearful avoidance as a, as an overarching theme or rule in relationships tend to have these deep subconscious wounds of feeling um, like they can't have boundaries, like they are not worthy as they are, they are not deserving of love. And they they often block themselves from really receiving love and care from somebody else. And so because they feel unworthy, they may choose partners that they feel like are um, you know, not up to the standards they would want to have in relationships. Or if they felt like they were um, you know, finding an equal match or an equal partnership, sometimes that actually makes them feel really vulnerable and afraid. And so they'll almost like choose people who are you know, not quite on the same level as they are in different areas of life from a societal perspective, because again, it's part of the reason that they can feel safe. They, it's like, oh, I can invest in somebody and they're less likely to abandon me or betray me or make me feel unsafe, or I'm less likely to feel really hurt when I, you know, if the relationship doesn't end, which inevitably the fearful avoidance, assuming it will. And so again, this can be part of what really drives the fearful avoidance in terms of their decision-making process in, with whom they date. And last but not least, number five, is that fearful avoidance deep down are really afraid to feel love a lot of the time. They're really afraid to feel a sense of being overwhelmed by their own feelings of love and their own feelings of love that are so strong, overwhelming them, causing them to feel out of control or helpless or causing them to really become more codependent and really give up their sense of self um, in order to be in that relationship. And again, this is not like what's going to happen. <laughs> it's just what the fearful avoidance subconscious mind believes and projects onto situations and sort of imagines is likely to happen. And thus, when we have these different beliefs and thought patterns that drive our emotions, our emotions really are what are determining our actions at the end of the day. Neuroscience has proven every single decision we make is based on our emotional state. And then we are just quick to rationalize or justify these decisions through logic. So you may see fearful avoidance get into this, this sort of dynamic of going, okay, well, if I choose somebody safe, I'm going to feel safe in the relationship. I have a better chance of being able to trust. I'm less likely to be hurt. I don't have to earn my worth all the time. I you know, may not fall into my codependent self and I'm gonna feel less out of control and helpless with my emotions. But I wanna really stress, all of those things will never be solved for by choosing somebody externally, by trying to solve the person externally. Those problems are internal problems in your subconscious programs. What you fear, believe, and feel about relationships because of past traumatic events, they're not your fault but they are your responsibility to heal inwardly so that you can choose the right partner and that that right partner is not only a match for you and somebody who truly fulfills you, but also you can feel all of those things, safety, trust, you know, the ability to be vulnerable without fear, um, you know, all those different things we mentioned because you've solved for those internal pieces first. So I hope this makes a whole lot of sense. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here. Please feel free to check out the 14 day free trial to all of PDS using the link down below and come join me in the webinars. We have a webinar almost every single day of the week, Monday through Saturday, um, for your questions to be answered, to get you that extra support and with all kinds of bonus content. So it will really empower your learning journey. So I hope to see you in there. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you. Oh, and please subscribe to this channel. If you 
enjoy this channel. I put out daily content just for you um, every single day, seven days a week here. Um, so please like, share, and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any.